Hey there, everybody. What's happening? Tim Warner here from CBT Nuggets. Thanks a lot for joining me for this micro nugget that's entitled Setting Up Google App Engine on Microsoft Windows. What I trust is that you're interested in developing web applications using Google's cloud tools, in particular, their App Engine Platform as a Service framework. I'm also going to trust in this micro nugget that you're using Windows as your operating system platform, and you're wondering how do you get your environment set up to begin programming. Now, as it happens, the Google tools tend to be friendlier on average for Mac systems as well as Linux systems, and the reason for that's pretty clear. Googlers themselves use Mac and Linux. They tend not to use Windows. So there's some gotchas and some things that I need you to be aware of. So why don't we pop open a virtual machine and I'll walk you through it now. Be aware, if you don't already know this, that there are a lot of Google Cloud tools and you're going to be overwhelmed if you jump into all of them at once. Keep an eye out in the CBT Nuggets YouTube channel because I'm in the process of making a whole bunch of micro nuggets that seek to make the Google platform easy to comprehend. We're going to focus on setting up App Engine and App Engine only right now. As you get into more of the Google Cloud platform, you'll want the Google Cloud SDK and on Windows that requires Sigwin and a whole bunch of other dependencies. Again, don't worry about that now. We'll cover that in another micro nugget. This is a pristine Windows system that we're on right now. I don't even have Python installed. So the very first thing you'll need to install, assuming that you're going to do App Engine work in Python, is go to python.org, go to Downloads, and check this out. Gotcha number one. App Engine is working only with Python 2, not Python 3. So you'll want to download and install Python 2.7.6 first on your system. Now then, while that's cooking, I'll reopen my browser, and the next thing we'll want to download is the Google App Engine Software Development Kit, or SDK. Google App Engine. Did I say Cloud Engine or App Engine? I meant App Engine SDK. Whoops, if I can type. And I'm just running a simple Google search to find that. Here's the very first result here at developers.google.com. App Engine is the, the SDK that is, is your main tool set for developing applications either in Java or Python. Again, I'm a Python guy, so my examples here are going to be with Python. But you'll notice on the left that you can also do PHP and Go, although those are in preview and in experimental mode respectively. On the downloads page, you'll want the appropriate SDK for your language. I'm going to come down to Python, and you'll see there's an MSI installer for Windows that's about 50 megs. I've already taken the time to download that. I'm finishing my Python 2.7 installation here. Waited for a second. Let's make sure that Python's complete. Yep, it is. So now we'll launch the MSI installer for the App Engine SDK. And by the way, I just did a generic next next finish install of Python, and I'm going to do the same thing here for the App Engine SDK. I want to definitely make use of my environment variables here. The Google tools will do a good job of trying to add their binaries and their command line tools, in this case a bunch of Python scripts, to your search path so that you can invoke the Python interpreter and set up your development web server and even upload your projects to Google all using the command line. If you're inclined to use a graphical interface, you'll see in just a second that the App Engine SDK includes a graphical launcher. When setup completes, we can run the launcher directly by using this button in the Google App Engine setup wizard. The App Engine launcher is, as I said, the graphical user interface for managing your App Engine projects locally. This is, in fact, a Python GUI application. I'll spend a separate micro nugget at the very least teaching you how to use the launcher. But basically what you can do is build your application. You can either create one from scratch or you can actually dip in. There's a guestbook sample application for Python. And once you have that there, you can start a development web server from the GUI by pressing run. Alternatively, there's the dev underscore app server dot pi Python script that you can start the web server on your local system from a command prompt. And then if we hit browse, it'll pop open your default web browser and hit localhost 8080 by default. All of those ports and all of that stuff, the metadata is configurable. The idea here is that you just get to work on your application. So in this case, we would navigate to the project folder. 
which is under Documents Guestbook, and there we have a sample Pi file all ready for us to open in our favorite editor, you see? When you're ready to deploy the local project to Google, you just hit Deploy, or alternatively, you can use the App Config command line tool. Final thing I want to say is, you also want to make sure on the server side, you have a free Google Cloud account. What you'd want to do is, again, hit your browser, go to cloud.google.com, and hit Try It Now. That'll take you to the Google Development Console after you log in. Now, a requirement to be a Google developer is just that you have a Google account. So I could use my CBT Nuggets account. We use Google Apps at CBT Nuggets. So I'll authenticate. You could always create a Google account from scratch if you want to. And there it'll take you into console dot developers dot google dot com there's various aliases that get you to the google developers console and it prompts you to create a new project there are some other things that you want to do here in the projects interface i will cover that in additional micro nuggets but in summary you wind up having your local development environment here on your system and then you have the published product that's accessible and manageable through the google developers console wasn't too difficult to get that set up, right? Oh yes, there's one more thing that you might want to do at the least before you get too far in your coding. Let me open up an additional file explorer window and show you. There are the Google Python API client files which come in a zip. If you're going to be using things like OAuth or the HTTP lib, You'll want to get these from this archive and literally just unpack these libraries into your project folder. Now, where did I get those files on the web? I'm glad you asked. Just simply do a Google search for Google App Engine Python API. Or better yet, Google App Engine Python API Client. It's called the Google APIs Client Library. Again, it's easy to install from the command line under Mac and Linux. For Windows, there's a link buried in here somewhere, there it is, that takes you to this repository at code.google.com, and you want to download the Google API Client GAE, that stands for Google App Engine, and then whatever the latest version is. It's a zip file, and you simply want to unpack those libraries into your project folder. Having those API clients is going to give your projects instant access to other technologies, so that's really an important step. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.